swipe, and then they also handle uh, voice. And so you can see that I can hit speech, and now I can say things like audible play, audible pause, I can go forward and backward, next chapter, previous chapter, and I can completely control it with my voice. Now, this makes total sense. Like, what if I want to read a audio book while I'm on the treadmill or something? And it's just, it's just not helpful to, you know, try to use my, my app with touch. So it's good that they implemented that. The next one is called Talk To Me. Have you heard of this app? Um, I think I know the developer. <laughs> yeah. Nick actually wrote this app. Can you tell us about Talk yeah, To Me? Yeah, Talk To Me is a, it, it's kind of funny. Talk To Me about Talk To Me. Yeah, I'll talk to you about Talk To Me. Um, it's basically a very simple app. I, I, I just fell in love with the speech SDK when Windows Phone 8 came out, and I decided I need to write an app that just uses it. It was just supposed to be a fun app, and it's text-to-speech. The core of the app is three lines of code. But of course, I wrapped it up with like advertising and app purchasing, about box, feedback, and everything. But the core of the app is very simple. Um, 60 plus thousand users later, a lot of people are it's using it. It's not just a fun app anymore. Exactly. It's amazing. I built this thing in a weekend. And if we can just switch to my screen right now, you can actually see. So this is Talk to Me in a store, so that's a shameless plug. Um, but I mean, look at this, because I want to show you how it's impacted people's lives. Because first of all, this is what the app looks like. Uh, it basically, you just type any app, any text, you know, in here, you press play, and then it plays it out loud for you uh, using the favorites. It, it remembers your favorites so that you can quickly pre-program some things. So people that want to repeat something with, without saying it over and over, typing it over and over can quickly do this. And they can also change the voice, like zero and everything. Of course, it only works with the voices that are installed on your phone. But here's where I was truly amazed. Let me switch over to the review. So first of all, over 600 ratings, 4.6 star average. So I think I'm doing okay. But listen to this. Um, this first user says, I love this app. I recently had my vocal cords removed from cancer. And now with this app, I can have somewhat of a voice again. <laughs> when I read reviews like this, I was floored because my little silly weekend app now became something that's it's almost like a life-changing experience for someone. Uh, Yvonne here uh, said, um, really helped in an emergency. I couldn't speak, text, or show the phone, but others could hear it. Got the help I needed. Perfect. Uh, my brother is on a ventilator, can't speak. This is great for him to be able to say what he wants. No more guessing with his lips. So I got like dozens and dozens of reviews like this. And it's a very simple app. As I said, text-to-speech, three lines of code, just wrapped it up with convenience. And it's just been so amazing. Excellent. Excellent. Another app that we can look at that's in the store is called uh, Translator. And I'm just going to search for this here. Translator is, um, I, I haven't used this one too much, but you have, is that right? Uh, yes, I have, actually. So I go ahead and, and initiate with voice. Yep. And it's assuming um, that I want to go English to French. So should we try this? Is yes, this... Tr try it, yeah. I would like some cheese, please. I would like some cheese, please. That that looks perfect. Je vous donne s'il vous plaît un peu de fromage. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of cheese. Where, little bit I of said cheese. some. It said some. a little bit. Yeah. That, that'll work. It's okay. It the, the interesting thing that the interesting thing that happened there, you saw that I had to do it twice, and that's because uh, it recognized it had a timeout at exactly. the silence at the end, and it timed out, and it automatically stopped, which is great. So I would be able to say. But then you 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 can speak it out. I don't know if the the command was in there, but you can actually say it. Say it, the can, it can actually speak it out loud afterwards. Oh, there you go. Okay, let's yeah. give that a try. So uh, I don't want cheese anymore. You want uh, some wine? No, okay, I yeah. Guess, I don't know. Uh, I'll have some bread, please. Okay. Okay, and then I can just do that. There we go. There you so go. So I could play that for my waitress and... So this app Hopefully actually, it got it right. <laughs> yeah, so this app actually uses the Bing service online. Okay. So it will actually allow you to, to translate into more languages than what's available on your phone. Okay. So, for example, you don't, probably don't have the French pack on your phone. Okay. But because it's actually using the service in the cloud, it basically creates the audio stream in the cloud, download, and streams it to your phone. Yeah. So this one is 100% connected to the internet. Excellent. Uh, the other app that I wanted to call out that just does a good job with uh, speech recognition and, and synthesis is Assistant. And I'm not going to show that one right now, but this one came along before Cortana came along, and it yes. really captures a lot of this... You know, like, what, what is it that you want me to do for you? You can say anything, and I can help you with anything scenarios. Pretty yeah, the neat. personal assistant story. There's a bunch of them. Like, Ask Ziggy is one of them. Assistant is another. A lot of people have been building, since the, the speech SDK came out of Windows Phone 8, 
a lot of people have been using the capabilities to create these personal assistants. Of course, they, they only work within the app, but you can still launch them with voice commands. And it's pretty interesting what people have done. Yeah. And you can still do it. Just because we have Cortana today doesn't mean that you shouldn't build your own assistant. Let's say that you're, uh, you're really big into a certain sport, for example. You, you might want to have an assistant that just knows everything about that sport. So when you launch it, again, from Cortana via voice commands, then you can say, I want to talk about cricket or curling, you know? So all the Canadians out there, you know, let's create good curling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take a look at what we've learned in this module. We looked at a number of speech design considerations to make sure that your app, like speech in general, is personal, experiential, critical, and... Uh, fun. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be fun. Thank you. Yeah. We also looked at how to use some fuzzy logic to interpret what it is that the user is actually trying to do handled failures, looked at testing, and we looked at a number of examples that really light this up and make for good user experiences. So that's it for design considerations. What are we going to look at in Module 6? Module 6, we'll have a little more fun. We'll look at some things like using App Studio and Get Started. You can literally build an app in five minutes. That supports that speech. That will support speech. Very yes. cool. We'll look at that, a real app. Okay. And then we'll look at how to create a translator, so the translator demo. Okay. We're going to see how we can create a similar translator, but with all the speech technologies directly from the phone. All right. And you're going to show I'm us the monkey I'm going to show a kind a of a more. full stack demo. My demo is going to be JavaScript from start to finish. And it's going to be everything from telling, the, telling Cortana what you want to seeing it happen in real life. And we're going to see also how you can integrate your app with this. With the band. With the Microsoft band. That's right. And also how to deal with screen timeouts. There you go. That, so that if the app doesn't need to go in the background or you want to prevent it, we'll look at these things. So it's a bunch of some advanced scenarios, other useful, accessible scenarios. So we're going to go back into code to wrap this up nicely for the day. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and take a 10-minute break. We'll see you after. Thanks. And we're back. Welcome back. Final stretch. This is module six of Seventh inning. So, oh, right, okay. A lot of people around the world won't get that. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, the, um, this is the final stretch, and this is module six of building universal Windows apps with speech and the Cortana is the, uh, with Cortana and the speech SDK. <laughs> wow, it's been a long day. All right. This is where so, we get giddy. I am, uh, I am unfortunately still Nick Landry. <laughs> <laughs> And this is still Jeremy Foster right here, who is now probably mic'd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah now I'm mic'd. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to talk about advanced speech topics. OK, so advanced speech topics. This kind of was kind of a catch-all module for some of the cool stuff we wanted to show you. Um, some of them are actually quite easy to implement, so they're not necessarily advanced. They're just advanced in the sense that they're, they go beyond a lot of the stuff we've covered so far. And mine kind of looks advanced, like it's gonna, if, if you uh, follow along on mine, you're gonna feel like uh, this is great, this is a scenario that I totally want and it involves the cloud and the device and yep. all of this stuff, but it's actually very short. Like I've got all my code in my OneNote and I'm just gonna drag a couple lines of code over and yep. so it, it's gonna be fun. The, the best apps are like that. Yeah, right. So Jeremy used to be a rocket scientist. Mm -hmm. And a lot of rocket scientists. I decided it was too easy. <laughs> yeah, they, they do send monkeys in space, so mm -hmm. there's a monkey connection there, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, so um, this is our final module here. We're going to go back into some technical topics. And uh, after talking about design considerations, which is very important because that's the difference between building a good app versus a great app or a bad app. So in this module, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, first of all, how to enable text-to-speech in App Studio. So App Studio, um, for those of you that are not familiar with it, is basically this great tool that we have online that allows you to build an app in just a few minutes. So I'm actually going to do it here. I'm going to build an app in a few minutes and show you how there's already built-in text-to-speech support in there and how you can enable this in your apps. <coughs> Next, we're going to talk about device screen timeouts. When you're trying to create a hands-free experience, what it means is there's not going to be any input. As we know, every time we touch the phone, it basically kind of like resets the timer on the timeout, which means that the, the phone basically stay alive. But if you create an app 
where you normally are intended to put it down, let's say you're driving, uh, the last thing you want for this app is to suddenly time out and then you can no longer use it because it's been shut down. So we're gonna look at how we can deal with this. Then we're gonna look at how we can pair uh, speech synthesis with translation and also speech recognition also with translation to create kind of an experience very similar to that translator you just, you just showed. Uh, how can you build one yourself and you'll have all the source code as well to play with it. Then finally, we're gonna, uh, just before the end, we're gonna show you a little bit how we can integrate with the Microsoft Band, which, is, which also supports Cortana and how your app can integrate as part of the experience with the Band. And finally, Jeremy is gonna go back to the monkey. So we're gonna talk about how to control external hardware by voice, which is one of the many complicated scenarios you can create, but we thought this one would be a, a pretty fun one, as Jeremy is piecing off like his hardware <laughs> next to me right here. So this is, this is live, folks. I mean, yeah, monkeys. Okay, so to get started, uh, let's talk about App Studio and how you can easily enable, and there's the monkey, he's back. Oh, he's gone. Okay, you missed the monkey. Yeah, so story of my life. I, I was trying to <laughs> pet the monkey right here, but it just didn't work. Uh, <clears throat> okay, he'll come back. Um, so, what is App Studio? So, for those of you who are not aware, we have this really great tool called Windows App Studio that allows you to easily create an app for Windows and Windows Store, uh, Windows Phone and Windows Store. So, it basically supports the universal app model, and it's all web-based. So, you can do this from any computer, from any, like you can go to Windows 7, Windows 8, you can even do it on a Mac if you want. Um, of course, to play with the source code is going to be generated. You're going to need Visual Studio on a Windows 8.1 machine, but it allows you to create an application very, very fast. It's primarily for what we call these promotional and informational apps. So it's not about creating like the next viral uh, social media app or, or anything like that. It's more like if you have like feeds of videos from YouTube or maybe RSS feeds from a blog or a site or a news site, and then you want to integrate this maybe with different social channels like Facebook and Twitter and group, curate all of the experience together into one app so that it can be your app. You can use App Studio for this and it's a great tool. And let me just show you now quickly how to just get started with App Studio. The cool thing is if you like this and you want to learn more, there is an MVA that was recorded by our friend uh, Lance McCarthy. It basically showed how to uh, basically use App Studio, how to play with it and also how to extend it in your code. So, I'm gonna come here in a browser, and this is uh, Windows App Studio. So it all starts at appstudio.windows.com. You simply sign in with your Microsoft account, <coughs> okay? And then you say, I wanna start a new project. There's gonna be a bunch of templates pre-made for you. I'm, I'm pretty hardcore, so I'm gonna go with an empty app. It's not that hard. Can you hit back real quick? I wanna point sure. out something. I made an App Studio app the other day and notice the touch develop integration. Oh yes. So pretty cool because you can use this other quick and easy uh, development environment called yep. touch develop yep. and you can make a component and then have that appear in your App Studio app. So this is kind of a fun space. Yeah, if you search for some of my apps in the store and they're big bald apps, you'll find like a bunch of them were actually created. There's a bunch of them that are uh, news for gamers of different game franchises. So there's actually one that I published recently about Dragon Age, and it was all about uh, touch. I used touch develop to create a soundboard for Dragon Age. Cool. So all in App Studio. So empty app, and I'm gonna say create right here. And it will create a universal app, so it's both Windows and Windows Phone, so the text-to-speech integration works with both. And it shows a, a, a Windows preview button there underneath the phone, so you can... Yeah, so you can see what it's going to look like on... So we'll, once we add a section, we'll add... I'm not going to go too deep here because yeah. we have other things to cover. I'm just going to show you how, for example, I'll call it uh, uh, Windows uh, Dev Info would be the name of my app. And I'm just going to add a section in here, so I'm gonna save this, and I'm gonna say I wanna add a section which is an RSS feed. So right here, I've got the, the building apps for Windows blog, which is a great blog you guys should read, definitely. And, and post number one, look at that, Windows 10 coming to Raspberry Pi 2. Right, oh. isn't, isn't this awesome? I mean, it just keeps getting better. It does. Windows 10 is, is just so awesome and it's gonna be great. So here what I can do is I can push this little button here to extract the RSS feed from this page. And then I grab my RSS feed, I come back to App Studio, and I'm gonna paste this in here. The section name is gonna be called um, Dev News. 
like this, confirm, and then automatically it picks up all the items. So now I can save this, I can go and edit. And this is where I can start like uh, changing the template. So this one, they don't all have images. So when there's not images for everything, I like to just keep it as a regular list like this. So that's the layout, so you can change the layout. The bindings are already made for you. But now, this is where the speech integration comes in. I can actually just click on the, this is the list page. Now, if you click on an individual news story, it's gonna go to the detail page. And the detail page also has its own templates. And then if you look down here, what do we have? We have a nice little switch called text-to-speech. Ta-da! Ta-da! So we just have to click text-to-speech, and then we just have to say of the RSS feed, all the fields that are in there, which field do we want to read out loud? So by definition, of course, we would want to read the content. These are all the fields in an RSS feed, so a published date, an ID, a title, a summary, content, you, and different URLs. So I'm going to say you're going to read the content of this, and then that's it. I, uh, I can save it. I could add other sections here, but you know what? What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go and finish this. I'm gonna go finish it. Um, this is what it would look like on Windows, on Windows Phone. Uh, normally I would have to add like time